the life. Today, I'll be trying to recreate the so-called jumping sodium reaction. I use both sodium and potassium metals in this demonstration to observe the effects of each. Both are alkali metals located in group 1 of the periodic table and react violently with water. So, to set up this experiment, I had to use water and a solvent that would not react with sodium or potassium. However, it needed to be less dense than both water and the metals. So, I used gasoline as it was the most readily available for me. Gasoline is composed mostly of hydrocarbons with 4 to 12 linked carbon chains. Here are some of the common hydrocarbons in gasoline. Isooctane, butane, 3-ethyltoluene, and methyl tert-butyl ether. In the US, gasoline is composed of about 90% of these hydrocarbons. There are also other components of gasoline, such as detergents and ethanol. Ethanol can actually make up around 10% of the gasoline, depending on the time of year and the production processing. This will be important later on. To make this experiment more interesting, I decided to add a pH indicator to the water. The water ultimately reacts with the sodium and potassium to form the corresponding hydroxides and hydrogen gas. Because it was easily available to me, and because I've never seen it done before, I decided to do the experiment with red cabbage pH indicator. The indicator in the cabbage is known as cyanidin. Depending on the pH, the structure of the molecule gains or loses protons, and its structure changes, changing the color along with it. In high pHs, such as those associated with sodium hydroxide in solution, the cyanidin converts to the bottom form. Here, it loses a hydrogen ion, changing double bonds around, and the hydroxyl is converted to a negatively charged oxygen. Therefore, this is the anion form, and it is the green-yellow color that we will see. Just one more thing before getting into the demonstration. Why does sodium react with water, but not gasoline? Here's the redox reaction of sodium and water on screen, with all the steps of balancing for convenience. Notice how the hydrogen is reduced due to the action of sodium, as the sodium has a higher attraction to oxygen than the hydrogen does. It also helps that water is a polar molecule. Now look at the structure of pentane, a simple alkane in gasoline. Where would the sodium attract to? The molecule is nonpolar, and the hydrogens and carbons are close enough in electronegativity that they don't really want to separate. The sodium has no way to react, so it stays in its elementary form. So, now let's get into the demonstration. First I add the water with the diluted cyanidin, which starts out as this nice pink color. In this attempt, I also added a bit of 5% acetic acid to the indicator solution to make the change in color more pronounced. This actually ended up being a mistake, which we will see later on. Then on top, I added the gasoline. When the sodium is dropped in, it sinks to the bottom of the gasoline. Then it reacts with the water to produce hydrogen gas, which propels it upwards. You can clearly see the color change on top of the indicator solution to a greenish yellow. It's also interesting how a piece of the sodium seemed to break off and melt into a spherical shape from the heat of the reaction. Unfortunately, this trial failed. Besides the entertaining bit of sodium that was going wild for the hydrogen gas, not much happened to the large piece. It just basically sat there on top of the water and peacefully bubbled away. I tried to agitate the solution with my pipette, which made the sodium jump up for sure, but actually made the gasoline a cloudy consistency. My guess would be that by agitating the solution, I actually managed to get a small amount of water suspended or dissolved in the gasoline. Even though this would be an incredibly small amount of water actually dissolved, the ethanol component likely could have kept it in solution, or at least suspended. So the result of this mistake, the sodium did nothing for the rest of this trial but float around and react with the water in the new gasoline solution. Because this first trial failed so miserably, I tried it again. 
This time, I didn't add the acetic acid as I suspected it might have reacted with some of the organic substances in the red cabbage indicator solution, creating a thin film for the sodium to sit on and not react with. You can clearly see the sodium hydroxide at the top of the indicator solution, changing it to that characteristic greenish color. Interestingly enough, some seem to have sunk to the bottom and make the solution change color from the bottom up. I assume this is due to either sodium hydroxide that was not yet dissolved sinking, or that sodium hydroxide solution is more dense than water to begin with. Eventually, the sodium sat on top of the water solution like before, and just bubbled along again. So, just to see what would happen, I started to add some of the acetic acid again to the solution. It changed to a more pink color, but nothing happened more than that. You can see here in this side shot that I took how clean and shiny the sodium looks sitting on top of the water. Without being exposed to air, the sodium does not form the oxide coating that normally tarnishes it. It actually looks pretty beautiful here. Even though I got the results I wanted, I decided to repeat the experiment once more. I didn't get any interesting results though, but I did get another close-up of the beauty of sodium without the oxide layer, so I included that here. I've never seen anyone repeat this experiment with potassium before, so I decided to give it a shot. You can see that the potassium melts into a sphere very quickly upon contact with the water and it bounces around much better than the sodium did. Because the mechanics of this reaction are essentially the same as the one with sodium, I included a close-up time-lapse of the potassium here. So, when all was done, I had a bit of sodium and potassium which were now contaminated, so I wanted to dispose of them. Normally I would just throw them in water outside, but I decided to add gasoline that I had left over, and to light it on fire. Here's what happened with the sodium. Now, after this, and destroying my old plastic container, I decided not to light the gasoline on fire when I added the potassium. But, as soon as I added it, it lit up anyway from the heat of the reaction, almost instantly. That light. After putting out the fire a second time, you can see the solution has changed to a green color, showing the presence of high pH and the sodium and potassium hydroxides. Oh, and of course all the pieces of my old burnt plastic container. I've noticed more people have been watching these weekly videos, and there are a couple more subscribers recently, which is great. Thank you for watching, and thank you especially for subscribing. If you really enjoy the content, feel free to leave a like and a comment to request things that you would like to see next. I'm always open to more suggestions. Thank you for watching as always, and I'll see you next time.